Hey guys, welcome to Blue Collar Catholic. Here we talk about everything Catholic related to the Catholic Church. And uh, we talk about it from a blue collar perspective. But today is Labor Day, so I thought it'd be fun to discuss the best president for labor and the worst president for labor in my lifetime. I'm 56 years old, come from a blue collar family, been blue collar my whole life. So Labor Day is all about blue collar guys. So I figure I'll give you my opinion, but I'll also give you the statistics to back up what I'm saying. So under the worst president, drum roll, please. I know, I know it's not too hard to figure out, but Joe Biden, obviously. Uh, wage increases for everyone, including blue collar, went up 3%. But inflation is 9% for a net loss of wages, 6%. Donald Trump, who I submit to you was the best president for the blue collar worker. Inflation was 2% and wage increases for the blue collar man and woman were 9%, giving us a net wage increase of 7%, which is very significant because for the 30 years prior to President Trump, under Republican president and under Democrats president, those 30 years wage increases were stagnant. Wages were stagnant. There was zero net increase for blue collar workers. Um, so how, how did Donald Trump do this? And how did Joe Biden ruin it? Well, right out of the gate, Donald Trump lowered corporate taxes from 37% to 21%. So right off the bat, I want to tell you how it affected me personally, and I'm going to tell you how it affected the whole economy. Me personally, I worked for Borden delivering milk, working 65 to 70 hours a week. My boss, who hated Trump, calls me into his office and says, hey, because of that Trump tax cut, the company's giving everybody a $2 raise, which we had just got our annual raise, which was like 50 cents or something. Uh, so $2 is unheard of. So $2 just because of what Trump did, like a direct result of Trump tax cut. $2 an hour on 40 hours is 80 bucks. Time and a half gives you $3 times I was working like 70 hours a week. So that's another 90. So now you're talking 170 a week extra for the blue collar guy. In addition to that, he gave us personal tax cuts. And whenever I tell people that, they're like, oh, I didn't see my taxes go down. Oh, my taxes went up under Trump. And I, I don't know what they did in their personal lives, how they spent, how much they made. But I always go to this. United States Labor and Statistics website, paste and copy and text them the facts. And here are the facts. Under President Obama, if you made under 20, and then I'll do filing jointly, which sick if you file signal, it's just different uh, different amounts, but the percentage is the same. So filing jointly, if you made under 20 grand, it was 10%. You were taxed under Obama, 10% under Trump. That one didn't change. But if you made twenty to eighty-three thousand, where most blue collars couples fell into, you were cut from fifteen percent under Obama to twelve percent. So right off the bat, again, I got an extra three percent. Add that to the two dollar an hour raise, and there's other stuff I'm going to add to it in a moment. And then eighty-three thousand and one seventy-eight, your taxes got cut from twenty-five to twenty-two. One seventy-eight to three forty, you got cut from twenty-eight to twenty-four. 340 to 430, you got cut from 33 to 32. 430 to 640, you stay the same, sorry. 35 to 35. But if you made more than 640 grand, you got cut from 39 to 37. So everybody except that one uh, category got a decrease, but no one got an increase. So that's a myth that Trump raised taxes. I don't know why people say that okay so in addition to that extra money he brought so many jobs because it doesn't take a rocket scientist if you have the higher under, under obama we had the highest corporate tax rate in the world higher than china uh so it doesn't take a rocket scientist for businesses to say oh now i can go to america and uh it's business friendly trump is you know giving us all these incentives to come back home you're only paying 21%, that's lower than most of the world. So we had tons of jobs coming back. In fact, Obama looked like a fool because if you remember President Obama, when he was asked, 
what he thinks about Trump's claim he's going to bring manufacturing jobs back. He's like, oh, what's he got, a magic wand? These jobs are gone and they ain't never coming back. Well, last count, it was between 600 and 800,000 manufacturing jobs came back. These are very high paying jobs. Good blue collar jobs came back. Um, so there was competition. You know, it was, the job market was good. And it wasn't like under Obama, there was a lot of part time jobs because Obamacare, he made companies, if you gave like 39 hours, you had to provide uh, medical benefits and, and he gave, you know, the government criteria and they were very expensive medical benefits. So a lot of companies just cut their hours. And like, for example, I was working for Tropicana at the time and I remember delivering to a Circle K one morning, getting there like five in the morning, girl checked me in and I was at a 7-Eleven that night, like four in the afternoon and the same girl was there. And I said, oh, you work two jobs? She goes, yeah, because of Obamacare, all these stores Cut hours. No one will get 40 hours anymore. It's unheard of. And I see and that was the beginning. I've seen it everywhere. There's so many part time jobs. Nobody. Retail became a part time job. No longer could retail people work full time. And you say, well, we needed Obamacare. I mean, Obamacare did have some good things that Republicans even uh, supported. Like, um, you know, if you had a, you know, if you had a current uh, medical issue, um, previous diagnosed with something, insurance companies used to be able to not insure you. That became against the law. We needed that. And Republicans agreed to that. It was just all this other stuff that Obama did to try and make socialized medicine that killed, that raised insurance rates and just killed jobs. Well, when Trump came in, he got rid of that. Kept all the good parts of Obamacare, but he got rid of the part that required jobs to provide medical benefits if you work 40 hours or not. Because a lot of these women that worked in these stores just needed the money. Their husbands had a job that provided insurance. You know, but these elite Democrats are so out of touch with how us blue collar guys deal with things, you know, they're just way out of touch, you know, and then he even, I remember he even cut our hours, how many hours we could work a day as truck drivers. And he was, you know, saying he was doing it to help us, but he was cutting our pay. <laughs> I mean, these, everything these Democrats do hurt the blue collar guy. So, um, uh, anyhow, um, uh, so right off the bat. Trump got the economy rolling, blue collar guy had extra money. And then Trump uh, approves the XL pipeline that uh, Obama had canceled. He approved all these drilling leases that Obama had canceled. And for the first time in American history, we became energy independent. The amount of money I was saving on gas equaled about 50 bucks a week extra in my pocket. So add a couple extra, you know, the 100 and change because of his tax cuts plus the 50 you're talking about like an extra thousand dollars a week, a thousand dollars a month cash money the average blue collar guy had because of Donald Trump's policies directly affecting the blue collar guy. In contrast, the first week Obama's president, he cancels the XL pipeline, cancels all these oil leases, declares a war on fossil fuel. And, you know, fossil fuel is, is speculative. So it was like, well, I'm not invested in fossil fuel made all kinds of regulations, so basically made banks not able to finance drilling, finance f fossil fuel companies. So what's going to happen? Exactly what the Democrats want it to happen. They wanted gas to rise. People would stop driving cars. That has been their end game for the longest time. And then they say, oh, it's, it, you know, then when it's getting closer to election, the media, his allies in the media, and uh, the Biden regime is trying to say it's the war in Ukraine, which it was already up to like $3 a gallon. It was under two under Trump and it was already over three under Biden uh, before the war. It was over three before the war. And there wouldn't have been a war if Trump was president because you have to listen to this. Trump had us energy independent. Energy is a worldwide commodity. So Russian oil was selling for like $30 a, a barrel. Okay. Then on top of that, Trump wouldn't approve the Nordstrom 2 pipeline to pump oil from Russia to Germany. He was like, no, why, you know, I'm paying, America's are footing 90% of NATO's bill to protect you from Russia. Why would you buy oil from them or, or natural gas from them when you can get it from us, from America? So no, he wouldn't, as a leader of NATO, he wouldn't allow that Nordstrom pipeline to be approved. <laughs> The, the day after Biden cancels our pipeline in America, he approves that pipeline. So now Russia's making money. 
and the price of oil is going up and up. It got to almost like $100 a, a barrel. So now Russia was r rich in us, rich enough where they could afford a war in Ukraine. They couldn't afford to fight Ukraine under Trump. Plus, they were afraid of Trump. Trump told Moscow, told Putin to his face, if you invade Ukraine, I'll drop bombs on Moscow. He probably, he wasn't serious, but Putin had a respect and a fear of Trump where 5% of them thought this crazy son of a bitch might do it. <laughs> Putin would not invade Ukraine with Trump being president. And Trump wouldn't have waited till he, re if he did, he wouldn't wait till after he invaded to put all these sanctions. He would have hit him with such hard sanctions before. In fact, he had the toughest sanctions on Russia already that Biden lifted also in his first week of presidency. So he enabled Russia to invade. Plus, he showed him that this American regime was weak the way we pulled out of Afghanistan and left Americans behind enemy lines. So everything this president did, even it affects the world in a negative way, but it affects the blue collar guy because now gas prices are outrageous. Uh, he got rid of the corporate tax cut. So now jobs are leaving again uh, and gas prices are through the roof. So Joe Biden effectively destroyed everything that Trump built up for the blue collar guy. So. In my humble opinion, as a blue collar worker, Joe Biden is the worst president for labor and Donald Trump was the best. And the Democrats know this. They know they can't beat us at the polls now because the good news is this. 19% of Hispanics approve of Joe Biden and like 80% approve of Donald Trump. Black Americans disapprove of Joe Biden at a record amount. Uh, black Americans vote, came out and voted for Trump in record numbers, more than any other Republican president in the history of our country, besides Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Actually, they didn't vote for Abraham Lincoln, but they, they loved him as the second most beloved Republican president, in spite of everything the media tells you 24-7, that he's a racist, because they see how he affected their lives, a blue-collar black guy. He went into their neighborhoods, and he... Uh, opened up opportunity zones for the blue collar worker by allowing businesses to come. If you come into these poor black neighborhoods, we won't tax you. We'll give you tax incentives. In fact, uh, we'll help you out financially if you open businesses because the blue collar worker, whether he's black, white or Hispanic, don't want a handout. We want jobs. Trump provided jobs in black neighborhoods. And he, and he said, you know, to break this cycle of poverty, it, we need, young black men and women to be educated. So he offered school choice, where the money the federal government is giving these poor rundown government schools that trap these black children. He said, no, take that money, give it to the parent and let them choose whether they wanna to go to a rich white school, whether they wanna to go to a Catholic school, whether they wanna to go to a Protestant school, a Muslim school, a Jewish school, whatever. It's called school choice. Let the parent choose. Because Republicans know the parent knows what's best for their child, not some government bureaucrat in Washington. But the Democrats fought that. And a lot of black Americans seen that like, well, why wouldn't the Democrats want me to educate my child better? Because it's all about control for the Democrats. They want to keep them where they're at and keep them controlled. So now the Democrats are really pushing hard on this war on fossil fuels. And in and, and some of these Democrat states, they're banning cars in as little as 10 years of fossil fuel cars. They want all electric vehicles, knowing that most blue collar people can't afford electric vehicles. So we're going to be like in Norway and Denmark, where a lot of blue, most blue collar guys ride bicycles because they can't afford cars. Not because they're pushing electric cars so much. It was because it's 100% tax on any car. <laughs> so, and, 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 and these uh, liberal hypocrites, Denmark and Norway, number one revenue is shipping oil. You know, they're oil exporters. So these liberals say they want to save the environment, but under Trump, when we were energy independent, EPA said it's a fact. We had the cleanest air and the cleanest water. So why do they want to push for these electric cars? I'll tell you why. Because when I was a young kid in the inner city, the myth was the Democrats are for the poor and the Republicans are for the rich. 
And then when I became a man, I realized the Democrats are in bed with American billionaires. Now the Democrats are in bed with American billionaires and Chinese billionaires as well. And the only way you become a Chinese billionaire is by being a part of the CCP, communist, the Chinese Communist Party. And it's no coincidence that Joe Biden's family, Hunter, his brother Jim, other relatives have made million dollar deals with the Chinese. And who benefits from electric cars? China. Because we don't have the minerals to make the batteries. So we have to they have to be mined in China and also the Congo, Africa, which don't have the infrastructure for the, the amount of mining and that they're gonna have to do to provide all these electric batteries. So China has this program called Roads and Bridges, where they help these poor third world countries build roads and bridges. They loan them the money, knowing they can't pay the money back. And when they can't pay the money back, they take control of those little countries. Again, so who will benefit from this mining? And by the way, if you don't know this already, mining is horrible for the environment. Mining is horrible for water. Mining is horrible for the land. So again, we're gonna go into these poor African countries and exploit them for their minerals. And who's gonna benefit? The Chinese and Joe Biden's family who has all kinds of business dealings with the Chinese. This is payback. And who's gonna be hurt? The blue collar guy who can't afford an electric vehicle when they start banning gas cards. So again, by far, Joe Biden is the worst president for the blue collar worker and Donald Trump is the best. Now, they know this, so they won't debate our ideas. They'll just call us names like they do. Obama called us bitter clingers. Hillary called us deplorables. Biden called us every name on their book, but his latest one is fascist. In fact, they won't even debate. Some of these senators in, in, in Pennsylvania, the Senate race up there, the Democrat refuses debate, to debate uh, Dr. Oz. In Arizona, they refuse to debate Carrie Lake. The Regis... Never mind lying in the debates or just name calling like they normally do. They won't even debate. So they're running scared. The media is trying to make it seem like they're coming back and, you know, they got the wind at their back. That's bull crap. They say that every, they say that every election. Trust me. The Republicans will take the House by 40 to 60 votes and take the Senate by two or three seats. So that's your good news on this Labor Day. But you need to register and you need to vote. And uh, you need to vote for freedom. You need to vote for people who love America, you know. So uh, there you have it. Have a happy and safe Labor Day. God bless.